Okay, so what's happening here is that I'm <laughs> I'm running it down. <laughs> what's happening here is I'm running it down. Hello everyone, it's Jankus here and today I'll be ranking the best plays from me from all time that were sent by you. So maybe not something that I necessarily agree on, but what you think I did the best throughout my career. Let's get right to it. Try and get him away, but Nif is falling low. He's at half HP. The barrel will split the team up even further. And Jankos is chasing. He's lining the queue. There's he is in the hole. Doesn't oh get the kill God. for him, though. But Overpower has finished off the AD. Okay, so this clip, I can already tell it's yeah, from my debut. And back then, Alliance was one of the best teams, actually. So, you know, we thought that they are like the super team. And we thought that we are never going to win because we are the new team in LCS, back then European LCS. Uh, and here I'm going to hit the Q, yeah, work job. Hit the Q on Shook. Then Shook takes the Q and uh, I land a good kick after flashing on taps. I think this was well done. At the same time, I do feel like right now, listen, mechanics are like so much better. I'm not sure if you guys were watching the Canyon game, um, the infamous right now Canyon game where he was playing the listen and he like did the trick where he uh, queued but uh, debuted before that so he can cancel his animation and he actually kicked the AD carry without needing to flash. Uh, I had to flash there, so I would say my mechanics back then were pretty good, honestly. Like, considering this is happening in 2014, I repeat, 2014, that's like eight years ago or six years ago, it's like eight years ago, so it's crazy. And, and you know, it makes me happy I was so good back then. But uh, anyway, I feel like players are improving, and as you can see, the game looks so bad, bad back then. Like, right now, League of Legends is so much better than back then. Uh, but yeah, this was definitely um, a very hype moment to me. I was screaming, like, TOPS! TOPS! Or Jinx, I don't remember if I was like calling the name, but I just remember I was yelling at my teammates to focus the AD carry. I think the play was nice and, and I really enjoyed it and I was super hyped and I was really happy that we could win our end. Okay, how I would rank the play? Mm, okay, so this is the listen play. I would say this was like a A, a play. So I, I think it was a good play. I don't think it was insane. S tier has to be like game winning, which I think this was like a bit game winning, but like we were already like winning the team fight. And I think it was also like quite early in my career. So I hope, I hope I made better plays than this. Like this is the first play. I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna make it an A. And I just hope I made a better place. That's all. Shy trying to find himself some sort of a play here. Wonder down to one hit. The Shy wanting to make it happen. Goes forward. Yanko's doing a good job body blocking that shuriken, making so they can't do anything else. Ning gonna be tanking the turret aggro here for now. The Shy is gonna be eating oh. the turret. Shy! Yanko's might be able to make it too! Ladies and gentlemen, first the first Blood King brings three bloods into the top lane. Well, in this play, uh, we have the Shy IG that just won Worlds a year before that. And right now we have to get our revenge because, you know, we lost to them and Fanatic also lost to them in 2018. And then we really wanted to win against them in 2019. And we met them for the first time right now at MSI. But yeah, basically they are trying to dive me. I EQ. Uh, I mean, first of all, I, I tried to bait them, right? So, so the clip is quite fast and many things are happening. But first of all, Vayne has to leave the tower. Um, then I'm trying to bait them. I tank the Akali East to make sure that uh, Vayne doesn't get hit. Then I EQ over Akali to cancel the damage and I also make sure that the listen cannot hit me. Um, then I focus on listen, uh, on dodging the listen's Q uh, so that that can reach me and then they both get double killed. Um, at that moment I was not so excited. I think uh, definitely the listen uh, clip was more exciting to me because uh, I was more of a new player and I was like, wow, I made this kick happen. But here I was like giga chilling. So <laughs> I basically know that they cannot dive me. And if I try to dive me, they are just giga trolling. And then, you know, they try to dive me. Uh, and I think that maybe I die if uh, listen hits the Q right, of course. But uh, I think it doesn't really matter that much because um, even if I die, I'm pretty sure that at least one of them dies, maybe both. Uh, and the important part here is that Vayne was able to not die. Uh, and Vayne was able to pick up the wave, we push out together, there is no TP on Akali. So basically from now onwards, uh, our position in the game is very good after that dive. Um, I think one decision that uh, maybe I would change uh, looking uh, back at this game now is after the going 3-0 on Jarva in the early game. Uh, maybe I should have built AD, I'm pretty sure I was building tank this game, but maybe I should have, I should have went for AD and tried to like carry my team harder. Uh, because we do end up losing this game anyway. Um, but then again, just look at that champions. We have Vayne top lane, then we have Vladimir mid, and then we have Nico bot with Tam Kench. So I really don't know again what happened in this draft, but it was definitely one of the more open-minded G2 drafts back in the day. Okay, so if I were to rank this play, uh, I actually think it was 
a B period. So why do I think it was a B? Um, because I think, okay, so many plays, many plays that are out plays require the enemy to mess up, require the enemy to make a bad decision. And I feel like this decision was quite bad from enemy team. And this is why I would rank it B. Because I don't think I had to play it that insane. I think I had to play it well, but I, I didn't have to like play it insane. And I feel like enemy team was trolling, especially Ning was trolling uh, in, that, in that play. So that's why I will rank it B. Maybe I'll change it later, but uh, I think uh, I, I like the listen play more for now. Um, I mean, I think it was a bit of both, right? Of course, we were uh, we wanted to play IG in a BO5, but at the same time, we went to MSI, and then I think we lost to them two games in the group stage. And then afterwards, we won against T1, I think 2-0 or something. But basically, what happened is that, yeah, Team Liquid did knock out IG from the tournament, and then we got to face them in the final after beating T1. And I think it was still one of my favorite tournaments in my whole life, because, you know, we won MSI, and we were at the top of the world back then, right? First Western team to actually, like, do something since season one. And it was really, really amazing and glorious tournament for us. Um, do I regret not facing IG? Maybe a little bit. Maybe the finals will have been a bit more hype if the finals were a bit closer. At the same time, it really feels good that we just got, got to win, right? We, we did beat the number one Korean team back then and then and they took care of uh, the number one Chinese team and then, you know, we got to we got to lift the trophy. So I wouldn't change it necessarily just because we won. So I'm happy. Finish. First inhibitor. Can they finish the game? Yankos, the lone defender. Against the five member strong Shalka, he alts in. He knows it's done for. The tower steadily starting to fall. Everything has gone wrong for H2K. It started so well, but at the end of the day, Shalka absolutely out execute. Exhaust coming down. Can they buy the time? Can they turn this around? Two members hitting the base. Rawls hitting the base. Oh, Will he die. drop? He's going to drop. Can they turn it around? They're so it's low. Trying. They have the CC. Can they turn it back? Triple kill. Yes, He's alive. Oh, Kill, and EU just keeps delivering! Yes, <laughs> so this play is quite simple. I remember it, yes, 2016, uh, my whole team entered, of course, and then I go in 1v5. Uh, very important right now is I'm trying to clear the minions because if the minions are not here then the towers take less damage. But back then, even when the minions were not there, towers to took more damage. Uh, than now and also as you can see the towers are like laser beams they are not the same as now where they just shoot like poof, poof, poof. they are laser beams um and yeah enemy team was trying to end the game i was trying to defend before enemy team can reach the nexus and as you can see i successfully defended because the nexus is literally one hit off and right after this the game is won um it was quite important game right now i'm yelling um, very mean things like yes kurva <laughs> I was so happy I was so psyched that I defended Nexus because at this point I think the game is lost right at this point I'm thinking to myself like there's no way we can win this game but of course I'm gonna try my hardest to to you know defend the Nexus so I ulted in the wave I think in hindsight probably I should have take, uh, killed all the minions uh, but as you can see we do have Nashor the minions spawn at the perfect time Vanda right now is here with me um, I have GA, I'm still trying to kill my teammates, the GA buy was also clash right there, if I don't have GA then the game. Um, then we focus on the carries, right, we want to kill the Caitlyn as soon as possible because she's just doing the most damage to the Nexus. Um, then fortunately the Trundle is also not able to like completely bite it down. Uh, and then the game just ends. The game just ends because we have a bot wave, there is Elder Dragon up anyway. Uh, so all we have to do is just, you know, make sure we go bot lane and end the game. Enemy jungler is completely depressed, no surprise, no surprises there, I would also be depressed if I would lose a game like that, that's, that's very, very crazy. Uh, as you can also see at the beginning of the clip, um, our natural power play is minus 2000 gold. <laughs> so as you can assume, we do have the best game right now, um, and many things definitely went wrong, but yes, this clash play made us win, and you know, I'm very proud of it. Uh, it's definitely one of my um, better plays, and one of like, the most memorable place when it comes to me. So if I had to rank it, I would probably put it on the on the S tier. I think it was probably like one of my best plays up to date. Um, I feel like you know defending the Nexus one v five and preventing the game from ending and then the end, ending the game ourselves. I feel like this is the kind of play that makes an impact where you just win the game. Like I basically won the game. I I won the game. I'm not trying to be cocky or sound like overconfident or something, but. Um, if I don't do what I did, the game ends, right? So, so it was very good that we managed uh, as a team to, to, to come back and, you know, we defended the Nexus or I rather defended the Nexus. I remember also tapping Jilly's on the forehead, um, which really made him tilted. Um, but yeah, a lot, of, a lot of fun memories from that one. So I would, I would rank his best here.
think that's Who's Whippo. He might be looking for it. Niski's it's TP double, too. Double TP. Niski and Whippo trying to get at least one kill here because they know if at least that they can kill at Yankos, they can stop that Baron from going down. But look at the damage from just a single undertow. No tower stands here. Whippo going in. Spirit Cleave coming out. There's the Ragnarok. Niski shuffles forward. And the trade comes in. Yankos! Oh, Yankos! Yankos! That is disgusting! That is not allowed! So this play, uh, we are winning the game. I made some good decisions and snowballed the game from top side. I remember killing people very early back then. Uh, Wunder on Gragas, still playing Gragas to this day. And yeah, well, people is trying to kill me, right? I hit the ultimate so that he cannot knock me up and Azir cannot uh, ult me as well. And then I just turn. I know that I'm very fed at that moment. I know that they cannot kill me in time. And if Azir jumps in, he's gonna die. I think, again, this is one of the plays that requires enemy team to, miss, to make a mistake because I feel like if Azir doesn't jump in melee range, to me, um, I cannot actually kill them, and you know, they double TP on me, I have uh, Infernal Soul already, I'm very fed, I'm not full HP, not full mana, so I don't have that much time, I also don't have Ghost, I ult and I try to run, uh, but then like I just mentioned, as it jumps to melee range, and basically my cue to go in is as it jumping in melee range, I don't actually want to fight until as it jumps in, but then as soon as as it jumps in, I know that I can kill him, and after I kill him, um, Yone himself will not have enough damage to kill me, as I do have Randuin Omen and the Brambles Fest already. Um, so if Azzy doesn't jump in, I would probably uh, keep kept running and I'll just try to make sure that Yone has to go back uh, on his E uh, and that I just get out alive. But then as soon as Azzy jumps in, you know, it's my cue to just go in. Uh, in this situation, Azir also has flash, so... But he just gets absolutely one <laughs> So I don't think he could flash away. I just crack his school with my relentless swing, I think. The name of the ability is called. But yeah, that was that was decent play. I think I really made use of enemy making a mistake here. Uh, it's not like a... I think I was playing very well that game, but this play itself is not particularly like... Wow, wow. I mean, it's, it's decent, right? But I would just rank it as an A play. Um, I think it's even better than the Jarvan play. Um, Maybe better than the Listen play, just because the Listen play happened so long ago, and right now people are just like play better Listen than you know back in the day. Same goes for me, uh, but not not nearly as impactful as the Hackering play. So this is why I would just rank it A. I think it was a good play. Ah, uh, okay. So what's happening here is that I'm <laughs> I'm running it down. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening here is I'm running it down. Okay, so this is very simple, right? I want to flash over the wall and I want to cue the Renekton and kill him. Uh, but after I flash over the wall and I felt like I can kill him, I actually lo lost a little bit of confidence and I was like not sure if he has EQ and W. So I didn't want to like walk up uh, closer. And I also didn't really exactly know where enemy jungle is. That's why I backed down from the play. I think in hindsight, I uh, just, uh, you know, I should have been more confident myself and I should have run on tower and killed him. And even if I died to tower, it's fine. As long as he doesn't touch me and he wouldn't touch me if I just run to the wall and I queue through the wall. Uh, but anyway, um, the play is quite bad in hindsight because I just waste my flash, I run around, I miss a queue and I run out. <laughs> so definitely not like the best play of my career and as you can see on the camera as well, the referee is face palming. She was watching the clip on my POV and the first when I flash over the wall, she, her head turns, she's like, huh? And then after I miss the spear, she's face palming and she like completely gives up on me and then she just leaves the... <laughs> <laughs> and she wanna go to watch someone else. <laughs> and right now the referee, uh, her name is Yuli, she's a content creator from G2 Esports, so we did meet at the office sometimes, but it's not a clip we talk about, but it happened. So if I had to rank this one, I would definitely put it in the... Um, that's also an Olaf clip, uh, but I would definitely put it in the Zoning Spear clip. And the Retirement Home, both I think. Zoning Spear or Retirement Home, both is good. Damage, it's about to come out. Oh boy, the party portal looks like it's coming in here. And now the trap is sprung. They get in there. Oduwamne getting suppressed. He's gone down. But Mouse, his GA is going to get popped. Vander a little bit too low in this one. It is just he a stole one it. for one. The steal away. Yanko secures a absolutely massive Elder Drake. And EDG are evaporating on the spot. Yes! 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 At this world with H2K, we were barely. I think we started the group stage like one and three or something and we were like not making it out of groups or one and two. We were basically losing, we had a complete mental breakdown, we had a mental boom, we didn't really enjoy playing with each other anymore and you know we really didn't think that we are gonna make it out of groups. And then we come on stage on that single day where all the group stage games are supposed to be over and then we just smurf on everyone. We won, we win against every team and I think this is the last game against EDG. 
where uh, we are play basically playing for first seed. And, uh, you know, Odwana has a really good flank on Kennen with the, uh, without the TP. Um, and then uh, they buy me some time. I was dead at the moment. And then uh, as soon as I arrive, I flash over the wall. I smite steal the Elder Drake. And as soon as I steal the Elder Drake, the fight is just very, very easy, right? Because Elder Drake is not as powerful or used to not be as powerful as it is now. I do think that Elder is like more powerful than, than, than it used to be. But it was very big impact, right? We stole the we stole the Elder, then we ace the team fight, then we end the game, then we make it out of groups, then we meet Albus Nox in quarters, then we make it all the way to semifinals, then we had I had a like we had a pretty decent showing against I think Samsung back then. I think we couldn't really, you know, close out any games. We had like pretty good two early games where I was scoring a lot of kills, but then we couldn't really uh, we couldn't really make it further. We couldn't uh, make it all the way to the final. So if I had to rate it, I would probably put it as um, sorry, <laughs> S tier maybe, um, just because of the backstory as well. I think that that was like very, very big um, turn point. Because if we lose that game and we don't make it out as the first seed of group, we probably don't win Albus Nox, and then we maybe don't even make it to semis, right? Because back then I think we were okay team, but um, I mean I think we we had potential to make uh, uh, semis uh, facing other team, but I think at that moment I think T1 and, and Samsung were good, so it would definitely be much harder than facing Albus Nox. So I think that play had a very big impact on our future, uh, and I also think that you know considering everything that was happening around the team and uh, happening back then, uh, it was a very very big play, very impactful play. I mean, I think this one is probably a bit worse than fading after winning. I think the fade after winning was like probably the best of all time because I was yelling so hard that um, that I fainted, right? And here I'm yelling really hard as well, but I actually didn't feel like fading. Maybe because I stayed in my chair. This was like probably my top three uh, along with the Hecarim clip. I think in the Hecarim clip I yelled less because words are just more impactful and it's way more hype. So I think the faint was number one, this would be number two and the Hecarim would be number three. Uh, if I had to rate, uh, rank it. Uh, I mean, for series, I would definitely go with 2019 uh, Summer Finals against Fnatic or 2019, uh, you know, MSI against T1 or 2019 Worlds against <laughs> T1. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not 2022 MSI against T1. Not that one. But 2019, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was all for the clips. I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And uh, if you did, please make sure to leave a comment down below. Maybe there's a play that I didn't mention that you liked. So go ahead and do so. I'll see you next time.